right, I'll get started. Hi, welcome. Thank you for waiting. And uh, I'm glad that you can join me today. My name is Suzanne Ballet Haight of Ballet Flowers and Design. I own a greenhouse in Malta, New York, and we grow a lot of different flowers, herbs, and veggies at our greenhouse. Uh, today, we're going to talk about gardening to feed our heart and soul. Next. <clears throat> so I want to inspire you and have you think about your gardening needs and what is it that really makes you happy when you're gardening um, or when you're outside. And a few things that I think of uh, when I think about enriching our heart and soul while gardening is enjoying the garden, walking through the garden, feeding yourself, nourishing yourself, providing those nutrients that you need from the vegetables or herbs or flowers that you may eat. Exercise, whether it's planting, harvesting, weeding. Uh, you also get so to tempt all of your senses uh, with taste, smell. Uh, all of the senses are tempted when you're gardening. Um, you visualize a lot of different, um, the, Chris, I think the slides are moving forward too quickly. <clears throat> um, if we can go back to the second slide. And then the, um, and then the third slide, the next one. <clears throat> so another thing I want you to think about is the beauty of whether it's flowers or picking your first tomato for the season. Uh, taking pride in your garden and what you've harvested, what you've grown from seed to a fully produced vegetable or fully flowering shrub or plant. Um, think about what it is that brings you joy when you walk out in your yard or your garden and identify your purpose. So some people want to grow just vegetables and feed themselves. And some people want to have the beauty of cut flowers all around their garden and be able to harvest a bouquet. Um, and it might be harvesting a bouquet to put on your table or give to a friend and bring joy to somebody else. So what is it that is feeding your heart, your soul? Um, identify those things that really make the garden yours and how to really inspire and um, make this year a happy year and gardening can do it. So let's, let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> One of the things that we've come up with is an edible and beautiful planter. So as well as feeding yourself, you can enjoy the beauty of flowers. So this one has uh, parsley, lemon, uh, lemongrass, thyme that you can actually eat. And it even has pansies in the back, which are edible as well. You can put those on a salad. They um, taste like uh, sugar snap pea, a little bit. Uh, more bitter than a sugar snap pea, but still very tasty. And um, then we just have the beauty of alyssum and calibracoa in the front. Next. Next slide. So going along with the edible and beautiful, uh, these are nasturtium, pansies or violas, both are edible, beautiful on a salad. And the nasturtiums, if you haven't tried a nasturtium, it's worth trying this year. Um, they grow really fast from seed or you can get plants, but it's got a spicy taste to it. First sweet and then a little bit of spice. So fantastic in salads. Kind of reminds me of arugula a little bit. Next slide. Toward the end of the season, you may think of kale in your arrangements. Um, so the flowering kale, some people ask me, is it edible? Of, yes, it is. It's kale, it's edible, it's flowering kale, flowering cabbage. Um, all of those coal crops that you might grow later on in the season could be used as an edible, beautiful container. And then as the season progresses, the flowers start to go, you're changing up your containers for the holidays. Uh, use that kale, you know, why not nourish yourself and 
uh, use the items that you're using in the planters that might be edible and beautiful. Next slide. This is a, a raised bed that we planted a few years ago at Pitney Meadow Farm. And I love the whole idea of our theme through this. It was also edible and beautiful. So we had three different kinds of kale that we planted, uh, Italian parsley, curly parsley, oregano, thyme. So it provided like uh, a little bit of companion planting as well as uh, edible items in there. And then the beautiful part comes from, well, it could be the texture of the, the kale, the herbs, but we also have celos, flowering celosia, uh, zinnias, marigolds. Uh, we also had some nasturtium in there. So it the, adding flowers to your arrangement um, can add a little bit of interest and in making it edible and beautiful again. Next slide. Here's another edible and beautiful uh, setting in the garden using perennials. And then we have winter red kale in the front, uh, drumstick allium, and there's actually a bee right on the, the drumstick allium. So you can tell that it will be, we, it will be a good pollinator. Uh, the hummingbirds love the red curcosmia in the picture and also the heliopsis, the yellow in the back that offers early season uh, flowering to all, all throughout the year. So you have some pollinators as well as some vegetables mixed together in your landscape. Victory gardens are another, um, I guess, idea uh, that I think about during the, our pandemic. Uh, we have created like different containers and uh, arrangements of items that remind me of victory gardens where it's food that you can produce for yourself and have it as a supplemental source of uh, nutrition for yourselves. Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt was uh, developed this during World War I and II. And uh, it also, I thought it was interesting because it was supplemental food, but it also boosted morale. So gardening makes you feel good. It boosts that heart and soul. So that's what it, we want to talk about today. We want to, uh, see what makes you happy. And it could be the victory gardens of fruits, vegetables, and herbs, but you could incorporate flowers at a later time. <clears throat> so I didn't realize, but the food was rationed. There was a shortage of food during this time and they had coupons for the food. So you had to go and get your food with that coupon. And so the victory garden was a way that you had supplemental food to, uh, supply yourselves. And they they created posters. In World War I, you have Columbia, sow the seeds of victory. In World War II, you have the poster of your victory garden. And those were signs to say, let's all garden. Let's have a healthy, strong environment that we that all of us can thrive on. We should do that now. We should have, you know, uh, the the COVID sign, you know, fight COVID, eat well, and plant your victory garden. Um, <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, all about gardening and being healthy. And um, whether it's healthy in nourishing yourself or emotionally and mentally, like being out there and be able to think in your garden and being able to harvest in your garden and take pride in the things that you grow. <clears throat> so this is a victory garden hanging basket that we put together. Um, we have Swiss chard, uh, red Russian kale, Italian parsley, curly parsley, thyme, Indian mint. Uh, in the front is a little tiny nasturtium that will start to flower the beautiful colors of reds, oranges, and yellows. And, um, it kind of grows together and it allows you to have something that's easy that uh, can grow up and out and fill in that space. So it will allow you to have produce throughout the year without having too much work involved. So sometimes gardening can be overwhelming and you take on too much. Uh, there's too many tomatoes in the garden. There's too many uh, cucumbers. Um, so think about what you are actually going to grow and what you're going to actually eat. And is it edible or is it that you really want the beauty of 
uh, the textural part of it or the, the flowering part of it. So think about what you're gonna put in your garden and what brings you joy. Next slide. <clears throat> And this is another uh, victory garden idea with a pepper plant in the center, uh, red Russian kale or winter red or lacinato dinosaur kale. Um, it could be any of that. Uh, I find when I eat kale, I have more energy during the day. I don't know if it's just in my head or if I just, uh, you know, think about all the nutrition in it, but I think it's got good energy and a lot of those cold crops will give you uh, a lot of the vitamins that you need throughout the day. <clears throat> the parsley um, in the front, the chives, this is a victory garden, but also companion planting as well. So it, it will um, be a nice accent to uh, a porch or a deck <clears throat> and you can use it throughout the season and have it easily accessible out your door. Next slide. Uh, American grown is another thought also going on the locally grown. We've had a local movement um, where we, uh, we want to produce and we want to grow our food locally and support the farmers in our area. American grown is the same way where you uh, are, grow are buying uh, American um, grown items. Uh, there's an American grown flowers, American grown vegetables. Um, so Michelle Obama started a Let's Move initiative, and then she wrote a book. Um, so she wanted to fight childhood obesity. But in actuality, the book really focuses on healthy eating for all. So it's, uh, it's kind of thinking about a lot of different areas, whether it's a pollinator um, or if it's eating healthy through all four seasons, developing your garden and changing your garden to make it what you would need it to be. But the kitchen gardens, um, it just is a way to feed yourself. And um, it's also, this is just an example, American Grown, the Victory Gardens, uh, national initiatives on gardening that make it inspiring. And throughout the nation, you can talk to somebody about gardening and there's always something uh, that people wanna talk about. Whether it's the biggest pepper they ever grew, or the largest sunflower head that they've ever seen in their garden before. So it's really fun to talk about this with everybody um, that is interested in gardening. Next slide. Uh, just a few other pictures of ideas that you could grow in pots, but you can also, uh, you can also take these items and move them into your garden and have a, a bigger display space. You have uh, in the bottom corner, you have a cucumber growing up in a pot with kale and parsley and chives. So it provides that Victory Garden asks where you have all the nutrients that you need uh, to sustain yourself and have that supplemental food source. And then up above you have kale mixed with uh, thyme and parsley. So it gives you a, an idea that you can incorporate almost anything together whether it's food uh, together with flowers or just uh, herbs and vegetables, but the textures also accent each other. Next slide. <clears throat> this is a salad garden. So as the lettuce produces, uh, you have herbs around it, a basil in the center, curly parsley, lemon thyme, uh, oregano. So the lettuce will produce, and then as it gets hotter, the, the lettuce will kind of peter out a little bit. So the herbs will take over the pot and then you can continue to use them through the season. So think about how you would use your planter, how you would use your items in the garden. And is it something that you need next to your door because you're not gonna use it if it's out in the garden. Um, think about like how accessible and how usable it is for you and have it located where you need it. Next slide. Pizza garden, another idea, um, having everything right there. So having everything uh, that you would use 
and maybe it's a salsa garden and maybe the pizza garden is a tomato, a sweet banana pepper, uh, parsley, oregano, chives, things that you would use on a pizza that you could harvest from your, your pot and then put on a uh, uh, pizza dough. Next slide. So identify your purpose, set goals, look at different ideas, uh, whether it's seed catalogs, books, magazines, um, on the internet, identify what you re really want to see in your garden, what you really want to bring you joy. Is it attracting wildlife? Do you want to see more birds, butterflies, bees, pollinators? Do you want to have more uh, uh, fragrant type things? Lavender, thyme, uh, the herbs, the flowers that smell well, anise hyssop. Um, it could be bee balm in your garden. So it really depends on what you're looking for. And the artist palette is another way of thinking. Do you want an all white garden or blue and purple garden? Um, you know, a multicolored garden, a long season garden. Like what, what is it that you would like to see in there? Is it something that's edible that you really want to nourish yourself? Or is it something that is flowering that you just love and, or you want easy maintenance? Maybe it's easy maintenance perennials and shrubs. So think about these things and jot down your ideas, form a plan. I use some graph paper and that works really well. And then get ideas through the magazines and books that are out there. Next slide. <laughs> <clears throat> so we'll just go quickly through these. Uh, this is a variety of seed catalogs that you could use. Next, the next slide has books um, uh, that you can <clears throat> refer to. Uh, you can get from the library. You can uh, own it yourself if you feel that you'll be using it more frequently. A gardener's journal would also be great because then you can refer back to it and see what you did the previous year or a variety that you really loved um, to grow and you want to continue to grow that. Next slide. <clears throat> I included this slide because we want to also think about what we're eating and how we feel. So how do you feel? What is your health? How is it? How is gardening making you healthy? And how is it feeding your soul? So I think about the food that I eat and I love the food that I grow because I know where it comes from. I, I know it's healthy. I know what I've put on it. Um, and we use, uh, instead of sprays, we use insects to control other insects. Um, we use organic fertilizer. We try to put in the good ingredients that I would want to eat for my food. So I, um, I keep picking up all of these books and reading them and inspiring me to eat better. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I, I think, uh, it's a long, a long journey through life. Um, and maybe it's a cookbook that has great recipes that you can harvest things from your garden, as well as, um, you know, books that just inspire you. It could be something about eating or it could be something, um, even a magazine that inspires you to eat well. And um, it could also be a magazine that inspires you to have beauty in your garden of shrubs and perennials. So figure out what you like and what you uh, want in your garden. Next slide. The, the library also has a variety of books. Um, <clears throat> some of those I got out from the library. Uh, so it, it's really easy to um, get access to some of the information that you, that you want, the cookbooks, the eating well, the gardening books. There's a square foot gardening book. Um, I, you know, I kind of peruse the, the books as I have time and uh, just to see if there's anything new out there or something I haven't seen before. <clears throat> so I included this slide because I thought it might be a good reference for you. This is just about vegetable gardening ideas that uh, we've created that we use in when we plant, um, such as like early season uh, plants to plant. Uh, the peas, um, 
we try to plant those around Easter. And I know it seems cold when it, it's like early, late March, early April, um, that we start seeding uh, sugar snap peas, but they love the cold weather. And if you can get them an early crop in, you'll have early peas. So it's really tasty and um, worth it to put in. I also wanted another helpful hint is carrots are very slow to germinate, very, very slow. So I incorporate some radishes seeds in with the carrots. So then I harvest the radishes and then the carrots are starting to germinate and come up. So these are just little tidbits of information. Um, you can look through this at a later time. Uh, I believe the, the video will be up on YouTube. So you can refer to this um, at a, a later time or take a picture of the, the, the a, a screenshot of the picture. <clears throat> So the next slide kind of goes along the same method, um, vegetable gardening. Do you want it in a container pot or do you want it out in the, in the garden? Next slide. <clears throat> Think about what you're gonna use in your garden, what you're gonna eat. Um, this was a picture from one of the books that I had, uh, Great Garden Shortcuts. Um, it's a Rodell Press uh, book, and um, you can see on this, it has companion plants, it has flowering plants, it has the vegetables in the center. Um, you want to think about your vegetables. How do you get the most out of them? So you need flowers, you need pollinators, you need them to come and pollinate, the, be attracted by the zinnias, and then come to your cucumbers and pollinate the cucumbers and then have more fruit uh, that will be produced through the season. So this has an example of zinnias, sunflowers, feverfew, yarrow, marigolds. Those are all beautiful. Even thyme is, a, the bees actually love the thyme as it comes to flower. So, <clears throat> so these are a couple, um, this is just a quick overview of how to incorporate some flowers into your vegetable garden to encourage those pollinators to come and give you <clears throat> more tomatoes, more peppers, more eggplant, more squash, more pumpkins. They all need pollination um, in order to produce the optimal amount. Next slide. <clears throat> and this is another reference you might want to take a screenshot of. Um, this is about companion planting and uh, certain plants will either encourage uh, beneficial insects to come and eat other insects, or it could be uh, that it gives a more flavor to a, a certain plant. Uh, adding parsley next to other plants will give like tomatoes more flavor. Um, the like cabbage moths uh, are always a problem. Uh, you could incorporate mint next to uh, some of your cold crops. So then it would encourage the, the good insects to come and you'll have less cabbage moth problems. <clears throat> so this is just a, something you can refer to at a later time um, when you're gardening, if you're interested in companion planting. And in our greenhouse, we usually have uh, copies of these as well. Next slide. <clears throat> Here's a, a couple pictures of some companion plants, uh, the marigolds, uh, marigolds with uh, parsley and sage uh, planted along the rocks. Uh, on, underneath is thyme, parsley, and sage. The texture is beautiful together, but then they also uh, invite good insects or, or companion planting. Uh, <clears throat> the white flowers are garlic chives, which uh, also you, you might plant regular chives, which have a purple flower and they bloom at different times. So you could have early spring purple flowers and then later summer garlic chives. So you add color to your garden as well as it being functional. And then up above you have the nasturtiums, uh, which will cascade over. <clears throat> so when you're starting your garden, you want to have good soil. You can see the dark soil in the front. That is good compost that you would want to add to your garden and plant in, um, have your vegetables growing uh, in the compost or perennials or annuals or shrubs. Compost is good to add to all of your plantings. 
you want to think about weed control. So <clears throat> the next slide has uh, fabric down. So that's one way to do it. But you can also do a layer of newspaper and then the compost over the top. So you want to think about how is gardening going to be easy enough for me? And how am I going to have the best garden in the neighborhood? So if I have some weed control, then I'm not going to have as many weeds. I still have the physical aspect of going out and uh, weeding it close to the plants and uh, harvesting and walking around and enjoying your garden and what you're actually producing. <clears throat> so the weed, this is a uh, landscape fabric that we burned holes in, and then that I, I, we're able to use that on a regular basis. There's also black plastic. Um, I really like the newspaper first and then the compost over the top. You could also use straw over the top of uh, the newspaper. Next slide. So think about seeds. There's a variety of different ones that are easy to uh, produce. If you look at the vegetable <clears throat> sheet, then uh, it shows a few things that are easier to seed. Next slide. The next slide has plants. <clears throat> so you want healthy, strong plants to, to plant in your garden. And uh, this is at the Saratoga Farmer's Market. And having like the, the, uh, certain plants that are harder to germinate from seed are worth buying. Next slide. So think about the textures together. It may be the textures of the foliage and the, the, the broader leaf and the finer leaves. It gives you kind of an artistic palette uh, when you look at it. Um, maybe it is that you want to go out to the garden and paint, you know, and see what is growing out there and put something together and paint your garden. Um, <clears throat> next slide. Nasturtiums, <clears throat> beautiful, edible. Think about adding these to your garden. I just, I think they're one of the best uh, land in the landscape and in a container pot. And they're, they're just so tasty as well. Next slide. Uh, pansies or violas are next and they um, also are edible and beautiful. So it can be in a container pot or in early season, uh, you know, feeding that soul of, I need some flowers. I, I didn't plant any tulips or daffodils. So the, the pansies could be great. Parsley. I love to go through my garden and I just snip off a little bit and I eat it. I eat it right in the garden. Um, it's tasty, but it also gives you good breath. Why not? Next slide. <clears throat> also the textures of lemon thyme, sage. There's a variety of different ones out there that you can incorporate. And they can also add some companion planting attributes. Next slide. Lavender. Maybe you want a whole field of lavender. I mean, who doesn't make, I mean, lavender, it makes you feel good. You taste it, you smell it. Uh, you can make a lavender tea out of it. And it like looks beautiful and it's a great pollinator. So is it that you want a field of lavender or just a couple of plants to make, you know, the, the scent, the smell feel good? Cut flower gardens. So we have gumfrina and celosia and straw flowers and zinnias. Um, we have some sedum up above that is a perennial. So you can add uh, some cut flowers to your garden and bring in a bouquet or bring a bouquet to somebody else and make them happy. Feed your heart and soul. Next slide. We, in this picture, we have some feverfew that is the white daisy. Uh, it's fantastic for making a tea and it's supposed to help with migraines. So there's beneficial um, attributes to the herbs uh, that might be different than a companion plant. Uh, we also have celery and sage mixed in with uh, chrysanthemum. So um, adding a little bit of edibles with your uh, flowering can be 
beautiful as well as edible. Next slide. Uh, this is another close up of the Kirkosmia. Um, and we also have the, the red Kirkosmia is in the front, uh, the Heliopsis is in the back. Uh, these are great pollinators uh, if you want to add them as a perennial garden close to your vegetable garden. The hummingbirds love, love, love the Kirkosmia. Definitely worth adding to your garden. And then in the front, we also have the red Russian kale, which uh, is edible and um, provides a little bit of food closer to the house. Next slide. <clears throat> Textural. This is not edible, but I want you to think about the artist palette and what is it that brings you joy? Is in the, your shade garden? Do you want that brightness? Do you need to lift up the space? It's a little bit dark. Uh, this is Jack Frost Brunera and it um, lightens a shaded area. So if you need that, you have a bench in your garden, um, what is it going to bring you joy in that space and the design of it? Uh, it can be a perennial like this. And the next slide, we also have a, a perennial called hookara or coral bells. Um, also brings up, lifts you. What colors really inspire you? What colors make you happy? So adding those colors to the garden, whether it's in foliage or flower, um, feed your soul, like find those things that really bring you joy. The next slide is also variegated. Um, it is variegated Jacob's Ladder and <clears throat> it has a change of season. So in the early spring, it has a light blue flower, which is beautiful because it's one of the first to flower. But then throughout the season, you have the variegated foliage that looks nice next to other plants. So think about that and the combination of color, whether it's a perennial in your garden that is accenting other things and creating that artist palette um, to bring you happiness, or maybe it's tricolor sage that you want as an edible in, in place of a, a perennial. The next slide. <clears throat> This is a pollinator garden. So is it that you have vegetables within your pollinator, pollinator garden or is it a pollinator garden that's close by? Um, <clears throat> I think it is important to include some sort of flowering type plants to get the most production out of your vegetables. So if you can encourage those pollinators to come to your garden, it will encourage better production of your vegetables. Next slide. Oh, this is a little video. Um, we can play it or we don't have to, but it's the monarch butterflies um, on the zinnias. And it, um, you can see how they're, they just love it and they fly around in the midsummer to fall in our gardens and it's just loaded. The hummingbirds love the zinnias, the bees, the butterflies. Um, it's a fantastic pollinator. If you just wanted to add a couple plants of zinnias in your vegetable garden, I think you would really um, reap the benefits of that. Next slide. <clears throat> so think about pollinators, uh, whether it's perennials, we have black-eyed Susans, phlox, echinacea, hydrangea, um, and think about that incorporating in with your vegetables, your victory garden, um, your American grown, your locally grown, your food that you can grow for yourself and nourish yourselves. Next slide. I included this picture because I think that um, it's important to just talk about planting methods. Um, we are digging a hole and planting the, the plant in this picture. We have a little trowel, but whenever you're planting, make sure you dig the hole twice as big as the root ball and then pinch in and um, make sure there's no air gaps in between the roots and the, the ground soil. 
So, and then after you're done planting, make sure you water it in well. You're gonna have the best success. And the same with seeds. Um, when you're seeding, plant your seeds, cover them up and water them in right away and you'll have a quicker germination rate. Next slide. So let's march into spring. You want to first plant your garden, <clears throat> plan your garden and or your landscape. Find what brings you joy and uh, figure out what you want to plant this year, whether it's in your landscape, whether it's in your vegetable garden, or it's a combination of annuals, perennials, and, and edibles. <clears throat> Another couple jobs that you would have during this time would be the ornamental grasses are just about done at this point. The snow is flattened them. So cut them back, uh, depending on the variety, three inches to 10 inches. Um, you will, the bigger grasses usually about 10 inches, fountain grass about three inches, and then cut back most of your perennials to three to four inches. And <clears throat> a few things that you would wanna prune uh, would be the late flowering plants, hydrangeas, rose of Sharon. Um, you don't, usually a rule of thumb is to prune no more than one third of the plant. Um, or you can just take off the dead, the dead blossoms. Uh, it's a good time to divide the perennials as they start, start to emerge and clean up any debris um, and, and then you can mulch as needed. Uh, I just wanted to touch on that because you just have to decide your method of gardening because some people leave the debris because there's uh, beneficial insects in the leaves um, and there's uh, maybe monarch larva um, or uh, other larva that you want to hatch out as beneficial insects. Um, if you find that you might have a crab apple that's disease, it gets a disease on the leaves, you would want to remove those leaves. Um, I think it de depends on your wet, your method of gardening. I tend to clean up my gardens um, because we have a lot of gardens outside of our area that we don't clean up. So you have an area that is, uh, um, it can provide a space for beneficial insects, um, in, and then our actual gardens, we mulch and keep cleaner as needed. So enjoy the wonders of gardening. I mean, that is really what we need to do as we march into spring this year. Next slide. <clears throat> I just wanted to go into the pruning. Um, this is a picture of your uh, zebra grass and variegated miscanthus. So those you would cut down to about eight inches. And the black-eyed Susans, you'd cut to three or four inches um, because right now they're just seed heads. It does provide food for the birds through the winter if you leave them up. Um, or you can cut them back in the fall um, at that that stage. I really enjoy the grasses up for the winter. It provides the snow to fall on them and it just brings a little bit of life. Next slide. <clears throat> uh, we also have some other grass. Uh, Dallas blue grass uh, is a panicum that's a native uh, that is in the top right corner. Uh, it doesn't have plumes on it in this picture. And then you have Carl Forrester grass in the center. Uh, both of those, uh, the Carl Forrester grass, I cut to about six inches. It will be one of the first to start to uh, show some green in the garden because it, it starts forming blossoms uh, in uh, toward early June. And then <clears throat> the Dallas blue is about 10 inches. Um, and you can also see hydrangeas and flocks in here. The flocks would have been cut to three to four inches. And the hydrangeas, I would just cut off the old blossoms on this one because the height seems good. Next slide. The hydrangeas can be cut, um, either it's the old blossom or it is shaping the actual the plant. So this is a uh, PG hydrangea tree and 
<clears throat> there's a few shoots that are a little bit longer and I would just for, form the shape and make it a little bit more rounded. And then as it starts to grow, it'll have a little bit more uh, depth to it and not uh, be perfectly round because the flowers vary in the size. Um, you also have spirea in this picture. So you can, you can prune that right after it flowers uh, or you can prune it to shape this time of year. <clears throat> Next slide. There's also sedum in this picture too. Uh, sedum you can cut to the ground um, at this stage. I sometimes leave it up for the winter um, because the snow does look pretty on it. Um, a couple shrubs I wanted to point out that you want to wait to prune. You do not want to prune these until after they flowered. So Wigilia, uh, Lilacs, Viburnum, they're all spring blossomers. So you want to prune them right after they flower. <clears throat> so it's important to um, prune at the right time because these have formed flower uh, buds in the fall and the last growing season. Next slide. This is one of my favorite pictures. I love the look of this garden. Um, so you have the textures, the colors, um, you have the textures of the grasses, a little bit taller, uh, wave, waving in the wind. You have Little Devil Nine Bark, that's a dark foliage behind the hydrangea. And you have <clears throat> purple coneflower echinacea um, in, the uh, in the middle. And it just accents nicely um, the color scheme and the, the, flower, the flower textures together. Uh, this is fire and ice hydrangea. It's got buds and florets, so it's a little bit wispier. Um, if it rains or snows, it doesn't get weighted down by the rain or snow because it, it's not as heavy in the floret. Um, also in the front, you have some phlox. And then as a ground cover, there's creeping thyme. So that offers another pollinator. Um, the bees actually adore that. <clears throat> so I wanted to point this out because this is more of a perennial garden, but you have some herbs um, of the creeping thyme in the front. So I want to encourage you to think about your garden and encourage you to think about what brings you happiness when you're gardening. So what feeds your heart? What feeds your soul? That's what I wanna leave you with today. And thank you for joining me. Have a great day.